اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ربی شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل العقتتا من لسانی یفقہو قولی جز ایٹین سورہ نور verse 21 o believers do not follow the footsteps of shaitan because anyone who follows the footsteps of shaitan is seduced by him to commit acts of indecency and wickedness if there had not been the grace and mercy of allah upon you none of you would have even been purified from that sin for it is allah alone who purifies whom he pleases and allah is all hearing all knowing verse 22 Now this verse has a background and that is that Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq used to help a poor relative of his financially and by default this relative of his his name was Mishta got involved in the slander about Hazrat Aisha Abu Bakr Siddiq got so hurt that he decided to withdraw his help Allah revealed this verse and then Abu Bakr Siddiq immediately not only restored that help but made it double The words of the verse says let not those among you who are endowed with grace and amplitude of means swear to withhold their help from their relatives the indigent and those who left their homes for the cause of Allah rather let them forgive and overlook do you not wish that Allah should forgive you Allah is forgiving merciful 23 those who accuse chaste but careless believing women are cursed in the life and in the hereafter they shall have a grievous punishment these women are those who are so innocent that they have no idea of immorality they cannot even imagine that their names could be associated with slander the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to slander chaste women is one of the seven deadly sins verse 24 such people should not forget that day when their own tongues and their own feet will testify against their misdeed 25 On that day Allah will give the full reward they deserve then they will realize that Allah is the one who manifests the truth 26 unclean women are for unclean men and unclean men are for unclean women pure women are for pure men and pure men are for pure women they are free from the slanderers accusation for them there shall be forgiveness and honorable provision from Allah 27 o believers do not enter houses other than your own until you have sought permission and said greetings of peace to the occupants this is better for you so that you may be mindful now in this verse this etiquette and this ikhlaq is being taught to the people of iman verse 28 if you do not find the person you wanted to see then do not enter until permission is given to you and if you are asked to go back then go back this is more fitting for you and allah knows what you do now the sunna way is that knock 3 times at the door and if no one opens or no one answers then go back and in case the person says that he cannot meet you right now he's busy then the person who has come to meet should go back and not feel insulted and he should not mind there is no blame on you if you enter houses which are not used for dwelling and in which you have some thing belonging to you and allah knows what you reveal and what you conceal 30 enjoin the believing men and to lower their gaze and guard their modesty that is chaste for them surely allah is well aware of their actions this verse is addressed to muslim men exclusively that they should lower their gaze 31 likewise enjoin the believing women to lower their gaze and guard their modesty not to display their beauty and ornaments except what normally appears thereof let them draw their veils over their chests and not display their charms except to their husbands their fathers their father in law their own sons their step sons their own brothers their own women folk their slaves male attendants who lack sexual desires or small children who have no carnal knowledge of women also enjoin them not to strike their feet in order to draw attention to their hidden trinkets and o believers turn to allah in repentance all of you about your past mistakes so that you may attain salvation 32 get the singles among you married as well as those who are fit for marriage among your male slaves and female slaves if they are poor allah will make them free from want out of his grace for allah has boundless resources and is all knowing 
33 and let those who do not find means to marry keep themselves chaste until Allah enriches them out of his bounty as for those of your slaves who wish to buy out their liberty execute the deeds of liberty with them if you find them deserving and give them some of the wealth which Allah has given you. Do not force your slave girls into prostitution for your own worldly gains. If they wish to preserve their chastity and if anyone forces them into it, then surely after such a compulsion, Allah will be forgiving and merciful to them. 34. We have already sent down to you revelations, giving you clear guidance and cited examples of those people who passed away before you to serve as a warning and an admonition for the righteous people. 35. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. The parable of His light is as if there was a niche in which there is a lamp. The lamp is enclosed in crystal. The crystal is of a star-like brilliance. It is lit with the olive oil from a blessed olive tree which is neither eastern nor western. Its very oil would almost be luminous though no fire touched it as though all the means of increasing light upon light are provided. Allah guides to his light whom he pleases. Allah cites such parables to make his message clear to the people and Allah has knowledge of everything. So this parable explains that the heart of a mu'min is like a niche in which the iman is like a lamp. The lamp has a glowing crystal covering which magnifies its light and this glass covering is the good environment. This environment makes the iman shine more. Now this light of iman starts affecting other believers as well and the fuel of the lamp is the olive oil which is pure and this is the knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah. This olive oil is the knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah. So the message we derive is that in order to keep our Iman alive and shining, we need two things, knowledge of the Quran and Sunnah and a very favorable environment. 36. His light is found in those houses in which Allah has sanctioned to be built for the remembrance of His names, where His praise is sung in the morning and in the evening again and again. Now, this means that the houses of Allah should be honored and respected. 37. By such people whom neither uh, business nor business profit can divert from the remembrance of Allah, nor from establishing salah and nor from paying zakah, for they fear the day of judgment when hearts will be overturned and eyes will be petrified. 38. Who hope that Allah will reward them according to the best of their deeds and add for them even more out of His grace, for Allah gives out measure to whom He wills. 39. As for the unbelievers, their deeds will disappear like a mirage in a sandy desert, which the thirsty traveler thinks to be water, but when he comes near, he finds it to be nothing. Instead, he finds Allah to settle his account. Allah is swift in settling accounts. Now here we see that uh, again a parable is presented and it's, it denotes that a hypocrite's deeds are like a mirage which he considers to be of value and benefit but in actual fact they are no better than an illusion like a mirage and as a thirsty person he uh, discovers the illusion when it is too late. In the same way the disbelievers will find out their blunder in the hereafter when their deeds will carry no weight and not avail them in the least. Verse 40 or another parable of unbelievers efforts is that of a person trying to swim in a bottomless ocean overwhelmed with billows one over the other overcast with dark clouds layers of utter darkness one above another so much so that if he stretches out his hand he can hardly see it the one to whom allah does not give light will have no light now this is a parable of a non-believer or an atheist one who does not believe in allah at all the example is of a deep ocean dark because of its depth then it is covered by a big wave 
This first wave is covered by another second wave and on top of it is a mass of dark cloud. In short, there is darkness upon darkness, so much so that if someone takes out his hand, he cannot even have a glimpse of it. Totally devoid of light, devoid of noor, and this darkness will encircle them in the Akhirah as well. And we see that the verse says that the one whom Allah does not give light can have no light at all. This means that these people are deprived from this noor of guidance which they lost by denying the injunctions of Allah. Verse 41 Do you not see that Allah is the one who is praised by all those who are in the heavens and in the earth? The very birds praise Him. As they wing their flight, each one knows its prayers and how to praise Him. And Allah has full knowledge of all their actions. 42. To Allah belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. And towards Allah lies the final goal. 43. Do you not see that Allah makes the clouds move gently, then joins them together, then piles them up in masses, then you see the rain coming from inside them. He also sends down hail from the clouds that look like mountains in the sky, afflicting there with whom he wills and turning it away from whom he pleases. The flash of his lightning almost takes away sight. 44. Allah alternates the night and the day. There is indeed a lesson in it for those who possess insight. Allah has created from water every living creature. Of them there are some that creep upon their bellies, some that walk on two legs, and yet some that walk on four. Allah creates what He pleases. Surely Allah has power over everything. Verse 46, we have indeed sent down revelation demonstrating the truth and Allah guides to the straight way whom he pleases. Verse 47, now this verse and the next verse that is 48, 49 and 50 are with regards to a specific incident. Now we find uh, that this incident took place in Medina, there was a hypocrite by the name of Bishr who had some dispute and enmity with a Jew over a piece of land and the Jew suggested to him uh, to take their dispute before Prophet ﷺ for judgment. But Bishr knew well that he was on the wrong and if the dispute was taken to Prophet ﷺ, he will definitely decide the case on merit and he will lose the case. And he asked the Jew to take the case to the Jewish court that was the uh, court of Kaab bin Ashraf, another Jew. On this point, these verses were revealed. The words of the verse are, verse 47, they say, We believe in Allah and the Rasul and we obey, but no sooner do they utter these words. than some of them turn their backs. These are no believers. Verse 48, when such people are called to Allah and his Rasul, that he may judge between them, behold, a party of them decline to come. 49. However, if they have the truth on their side, they come to him voluntarily. 50. If there is a disease in their hearts, either they are skeptical or else they fear that Allah and his Rasul will deny them justice. Nay, in fact, they are the ones who are the wrongdoers. 51. The response of the true believers when they are called to Allah and His Rasul that He may judge between them is only to say, we hear and we obey. Such are the ones who will attain felicity. 52. Only those who obey Allah and His Rasul, have fear of Allah and do good deeds are the ones who will be the winners. 53. They solemnly swear by Allah that if you command them, they will go forth leaving their homes. O Muhammad wasallam, tell them, do not swear, your obedience, not your oath will count. Surely Allah is fully aware of what you do. Now another quality of hypocrites is exposed that they, they do less. Uh, work and talk much whereas the case of a moment is different he talks less and does more here Allah warns them that it is not your words but your deeds that will count verse 54 obey Allah and obey the Rasul if you do not 
the rasul is still under obligation to fulfill his duty as you are under obligation to fulfill yours and if you obey him you shall be rightly guided note it well that the responsibility of the rasul is only to deliver allah's message clearly now we can see that in these verses allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again stresses the point obey allah and obey the rasul Obedience to Allah is not complete without obedience to Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his sunnah his hadith have to be consulted for every matter 55 Allah has promised those of you who believe and do good deeds that he will most surely make them successors in the earth as he made their ancestors before them and that he will establish for them their religion the one which he has chosen for them and that he will change their present state of fear into peace and security let them worship me alone and not to commit shirk with me and if anyone rejects faith after this it is they who are the transgressors verse 56 therefore establish salah pay zakah and obey the rasul so that you may be shown mercy now here allah does not mention himself but only prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that obey him if you want mercy 57 never think that the unbelievers can frustrate anything in the land as for them the fire shall be their home and that is an evil abode 58 o believers let your servants and those children who have not yet attained puberty ask your permission before coming in to see you on three occasions before fajr salah at noon when you put off your clothes and after the isha salah these are your three times of privacy at other times there is no blame on you if you or they go around visiting one another thus allah makes his revelations clear to you for allah is all knowing all wise 59 and when your children reach the age of puberty let them still ask your permission as their elders do thus allah makes his revelations clear to you for allah is all knowing all wise verse 60 there is no blame on such elderly women who have no interest in getting married if they lay aside their cloaks without displaying their adornment but it is better for them if they do not discard allah is all hearing all knowing verse 61 there is no blame on the blind nor is on the lame nor there is blame on the sick to eat at your table nor shall it be an offense for you to eat in the house of your own children or your father or your mother or your brothers or your sisters or your paternal uncles or your paternal aunts or your maternal uncles or your maternal aunts or your sincere friends or in the house with the keys of which you are interested there is no blame on you whether you eat together or apart however when you enter the houses you should greet one another with the greetings of peace prescribed by allah blessed and pure thus allah makes his revelations clear to you so that you may grow in understanding now this uh, verse gives us a lesson and that is that the handicapped person can have his meal anywhere at any house in order to satisfy his hunger because the society as a whole owes to him this privilege on account of his handicap and as for the normal people uh, in the houses mentioned in this verse if some one offers or shows encouragement that you should eat and it is time for lunch or dinner then there should be no formalities between you 62 the true believers are only those who believe in allah and his rasul and who when gathered with him on a matter requiring collective action do not depart until they have obtained his permission only those who ask your permission are the ones who truly believe in allah and his rasul so when they ask your permission to leave and attend to their private business you may give permission to those of them whom you deem appropriate and implore allah to forgive them now this verse also has a background and the background is that in the battle of azab uh, 
that is before the battle prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions were busy digging the trench around medina during this time the hypocrites came and they worked for a very short while just to be seen and then they sneaked away the believers worked with full zeal and if they had to go due to any emergency they sought permission from prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam first then orders came to tighten the discipline and now no one could go without permission and a warning that it is unlawful to ask permission without a genuine cause and that too depends on the leader that he grants it or not looking at the collective cause first 63 do not consider the summoning of the rasul in the same manner as you consider the summoning of one another among yourself allah knows those of you who slip away concealing themselves behind others let those who disobey his orders be aware lest some trial befall them or a painful punishment be inflicted on them the background of this is that when the bedouins used to come to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they used to say ya muhammad ukhruj meaning that o muhammad come out allah subhanahu wa taala greatly disliked this mannerism of calling him because the respect that we owe to his prophet demands that he should be addressed in an extremely humble and respectable way 64 be aware whatever is in the heavens and in the earth belongs to allah he knows what you are up to the day on which they will be brought back to him he will tell them what they have done allah has the knowledge of everything surah al furqan verse 1 Blessed is the one who has revealed Al-Furqan to his servant that he may be a warner to the worlds. Now here Furqan refers to the Quran and Furqan means the criterion, criterion between truth and falsehood, between darkness and light, between justice and injustice, between right and wrong and then the word nazzala conveys that it came bit by bit gradually so that it could be absorbed on whom his slave Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and for whom lil alamin for the whole world verse 2 he is the one to whom belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth has begotten no son and has no partner in his kingdom he has created everything and ordained them in due proportion verse 3 yet the unbelievers have taken besides him other gods which can create nothing but are themselves created which can neither harm nor help even themselves and which have no power over life or death or raising the dead to life verse for those who deny the truth say this al furqan is but a forgery which he himself has devised and some other people have helped him unjust is what they do and falsehood is what they utter verse 5 these are the stories of the ancient which he has copied down from what is read to him day and night verse 6 tell them this quran is revealed by him who knows the secrets of the heavens and the earth surely he is ever forgiving merciful verse 7 and they say what sort of rasul is he who eats food and walks through the streets why has no angel been sent down with him to threaten the disbelievers verse 8 why he has not been given a treasure or at least a garden from which he could eat and these wicked people further say you are only following a man who is bewitched verse 9 see what sort of example they apply to you because they are lost and cannot find the way to refute the truth of tawhid and life after death verse 10 blessed is he who if he wills could give you much better things than what they propose for you not one but many gardens beneath which rivers flow and make for you palaces to verse 11 but in fact they deny the hour and for the one who denies the coming of the hour we have prepared a blazing fire 12 when it shall come into their sight from a long distance they will hear its raging and roaring 13 and when chained together they are flung into some narrow space they will fervently plead for death 14 but they will be told do not plead for one death today but plead for many deaths 15 ask them which is better this hell or the eternal paradise which the writers are being promised which will be the reward of their good deeds and also their final destination verse 16 wherein they will live forever and get everything that they wish for and this is the promise worth praying for which your rub is going to fulfill 17 on that day he will gather all these people together along
with the deities whom they worship besides Allah and ask, was it you who missed these servants of mine or did they choose to go astray themselves? Verse 18, these deities will answer, glory be to you, it was not befitting for us that we could take any guardian besides you, but you let them and their forefathers enjoy the comforts of worldly life until they forgot the reminder and thereby became worthless people. 19. Thus your gods will deny all that you profess today. Then you shall neither be able to avert your punishment, nor shall you get any help from anywhere. And everyone among you who is guilty of wrongdoings, we shall make him taste the mighty punishment. 20. We have sent no Rasul before you who did not eat or walk through the streets. In fact, we test you by means of one another. Now will you show patience, for your Rabb is ever observant. وآخر التوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين